uh, and prayers. And I'm very, very grateful to me um, for all the hard work that's brought us here. I know John has worked very hard to make this possible, and we are very, very grateful to him um, for his leadership. I have benefited enormously from his work already, and I hope and pray that God will bless him uh, in his work in his uh, still young scholarly career. Uh, and we expect even greater things from him. We are indeed grateful to God for his life of service and scholarship. I want to express my very heartfelt thanks to the Center for Early African Christianity based in Pennsylvania um, for facilitating um, this conference, for helping me personally and particularly to be able to travel here and for looking after me. Um, this is one of several visits that the Center for African Christianity has sponsored. And they have made it possible uh, for me to come back to return to Africa. Um, at the time then, increasingly, my work was actually taking me to Asia, uh, particularly to the Middle East. Uh, and I took that as a sign from God. That I had offered my service to Africa, and now um, God was coming me in new directions, uh, Asia and the Middle East, the Arab world in particular. Uh, but I have spoken too soon. In came uh, the Center for Early African Christianity, uh, saying, we will facilitate uh, your work uh, in Africa. And so God opened that door and allowed me uh, to come back to Africa in this way. I'm indeed very grateful to them. Um, there, the Center for Early African Christianity is represented here by Mike Blair, who is on the back there, and Joe uh, Lofsky, who is sitting up here, and they have some literature and material um, about the work of the center, which is very, very important um, for early African Christianity, uh, so that it gives us the depth of historical field that we normally don't have. We are indeed very, very grateful to God for what the center has been able to do, not only in Africa, but also in the United States, in Philadelphia, for example, there is very um, strong interest in the work of the center by African-American churches, um, uh, among others. Uh, and that is a very um, encouraging thing that you can build bridges uh, between Africa and the African-American community in the United States. Um, it is always, for me, emotional experience uh, to come back to Ghana. Uh, my wife and I lived here in Ghana when I taught, and she also taught at the University of Ghana later on for many years. And we developed very, very strong uh, personal friendships. And we left somewhat reluctantly. Uh, this was during the Achampo regime. Those of you who are Ghanaians are familiar with this. Um, it was a very difficult uh, professional decision for, for us, and we, it was a leap in the dark as well. Uh, we left Ghana not knowing really where we were going, uh, how we would get there. Um, we, just, we just left. Uh, and when I came back for the first time since we left in the late 70s, I didn't realize that Ghana had made such a deep impact on me. Literally, I was completely blasé about it. I arrived at the airport, uh, got down from the train, um, and then it hit me. Suddenly, uh, that this was my spiritual home in many ways. Quite something. And the same feeling I got uh, two days ago when I walked through the tunnel uh, to come out of the airport. By the way, I didn't have a visa. <laughs> 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 And when I arrived at Heathrow in London, they were not going to let me fly. Um, and the security, the airport security, pounced on me. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot fly. I said, well, you we have to find a way for me to fly. <laughs> uh, in the end, it worked out, um, even though I didn't have a visa. Um, so God works in this TV of ways. Um, I want to talk about. Um, Chairman, you'll excuse me for having taken um, a little 
time to help um, make my uh, acknowledgments to all the people uh, who have worked so hard to make uh, our meeting here possible. Um, I want to share some thoughts with you, and they're really thoughts, conversational um, ideas about the Christian, African, and Islam. And my subtitle is The Threefold Summons. Uh, between them, <clears throat> Christianity and Islam have a deep bond with African values and practices. And both religions have benefited by that bond. Seldom is that fact taken into account when people discuss these religions in their African setting. I hope it's not just my African sensitivity that makes me suspicious of that oversight by writers. But my instinct tells me that the neglect of the African dimension has distorted the picture seriously. If that observation is correct, it allows me to indulge my instinct in this way. If Christianity and Islam are admired, what is the worth of that admiration when it discounts the African background that has so well served the two religions? How can you admire these religions without admiring the Africans of their appeal? In the work I have done until now, <clears throat> I have tried to pay tribute to this African element, and I hope it is evident in that work that I in no way take anything essential away from these religions as expressed in the lives of their followers. Neither the Christian African nor her Muslim counterpart is an anomaly for having Africa in common. I stumbled on this African element by accident toward the end of my undergraduate studies in the United States. I arrived in Nigeria, Lebanon, to continue my studies in Arabic and Islam. I was based, uh, as I said, in Lebanon. The senior English missionary, who was my host, suggested that we visit an old Muslim chief in a village, in a Yoruba village nearby, thus introducing the Imam, who is really the main character of the story I wish to tell in this lecture. Setting out in the missionary's car, we duly arrived a couple of hours later in the village. The chief was thrilled to see us, scarcely able to contain his excitement. Even before we were done with the formality of greeting, and you know in Africa that takes a long time. <laughs> Americans are very impatient with greetings. <laughs> Get down to business. <laughs> But even before we finished with those formalities, and while the grin um, on his face remained as wide as at the start, he challenged us to explain to him how God could be three persons and yet one at the same time. And while we were at it, could we also say how Jesus could be human and be the Son of God simultaneously? Wow. My missionary companion deployed his impeccable Yoruba to rise to the chief's challenge, taking time off now and then to give me, poor African, uh, a running summary of the discussion. <laughs> the longer the discussion went on, the more enthusiastic the chief seemed, his grin returning in flashes of evident satisfaction that he was getting the better of the argument against this Oxbridge educated missionary dealing so fluently in Yoruba idioms and metaphors. I remember the beginning of our missionary as we wrapped up the meeting and headed home. He was not exactly deflated or even faint-hearted. He was simply put off his stride. After all, the trip had cost us time and energy, not to say expense, and he for one had put a lot of thought and care into it. And yet here we were, returning empty-handed, leaving the old chief feeling rather chuffed that he had worsted the pair of us single-handedly. <laughs> as far as I could gather, my share in this encounter